continue with the related rate section. Uh, so let's make a few remarks. First one is that in general, it is convenient to follow these steps. First to identify, we need to identify the relevant variables and to restate the problem in uh, using mathematics. All right, so we uh, restate the problem as finding, say, y prime, h primes in the previous example. This is a problem that makes sense uh, in it's a calculus problem. Second very important thing is to find an equation that relates the variables and always differentiates this relation with respect to time. So before uh, we used the fact that the latter had a constant length and Pythagoras and that gives us our equation. That's our relation between the height and x. Uh, the third step is a very important one is to use the given data to find the desired unknown derivative or rate of change. Before we knew that x prime was 0.8 meters per second in the previous example that was given to us. Uh, so, uh, so those are general recommendations. So if we want we can go over a few more examples. This is an example that comes up uh, every couple of semesters in exams. This is the canonical, the, the canonical example, which is the conical, conical tank. Uh, so we have that water pours into a conical tank of height height 10 meters and radius 4 meters at a rate of six meter cubic meters per minute. So the question is, uh, is A at what rate is the water level rising when the level is five meters high. You note here that we're asked to find the rate of change of some derivative. Here so is the level here, the height, the, the level of the water, uh, um, what uh, rate it is rising when the level is five meters high. So instead of uh, a time, um, so like in the previous problem, we're asked to find h prime at one. 
we have to find the rate of change when the height is known uh, to be 5 meters. So this problem is slightly different from the previous one in that sense. Uh, the second question is, as time passes, what happens to the rate at which the water level rises. So what is going on? Okay, so, put two, so the solution here. Uh, let's try to solve this problem. And let's go over it very carefully. Uh, we'll apply the first step. So we need to identify the important variables here V is going to be the volume and H is going to be the height of the water at time T so we're asked to find or compute the H DT so this is the task uh, when h is equal to 5 and we're given that uh, dv dt is equal to uh, 6 uh, cubic meters per minute okay so for uh, the second step we need to find a geometric constraint, something that relates our variable. So this is our uh, conical tank. This is the radius, which we know is equal to four, and So this is the water level. This is H here, and this is the radius here at time T. This total height here is 10. This is important. And again here, R is going to represent the radius of the cone at height h. So the what is the what is the geometric information that we have? We already know the volume of a cone. So the volume of uh, the small cone. So at any for any given R and H, we know that this is equal to one third by H times R squared. Uh, uh, we also need to know, uh, here we have too many variables. I mean, you, we know uh, we set our variables here to be V and H. We have information about V and we want to find uh, the H dt. Here we have V, H and R. So we need to reduce the number of variables and this is possible because we also have to take into account that there's uh, uh, th there are two triangles here that are similar. Um, if we look at the cross section in the uh, in the y-x plane, say, of the cone, we see that there are two the there are two triangles that are similar. So we put. Uh, the cone look from the side and we have this is the radius 4 and this is the height total height which is 10 
and we have a smaller triangle here whose radius is r and whose height is h. These two triangles are similar, meaning that for, for divided, divided by 10 is equal to r divided by h. And this implies then that r is 0.4h. Plugging this back into formula for the volume, we get that the volume is then one third pi h 0.4 h squared or 0.16 over 3 times pi h q. Now we have a relation, a geometric relation between our two variables, the variables that we chose at the beginning. Right, so um, V and H. Okay, and uh, the second step, oh, the, the second step um, at the end asks us to differentiate this relation, always differentiate this relation. So, differentiating on both sides, we get the dV dt, so this is the left hand side, is equal to 0.16. And then, uh, well, we can just leave a 3 here. It's going to be canceled out. Let's buy h cube. Remember, h is h cube is a function of t. So we need to apply the chain rule. It's like in, when we're differentiating things implicitly. Um, so this is 3 times h squared times h prime. We are differentiating this with respect to t, not h. If it was, if it were uh, h, we were differentiating with respect to, then we would get 3h squared. But since we're differentiating with respect to t, we get 3h squared times h prime. So we can cancel these three out, and we get that this is 0.16 pi h squared times dh dt. Okay, so what do we know? We know that dv dt is constant. So this is equal to 6. Let's forget about the units. Uh, this, never, uh, this never plays any role. I mean, if you, uh, in the end, all the units are going to cancel out to give you something sensible. If you're computing a distance, it's going to give you meters. Or So just be careful when So one of the quantities is given in terms of uh, meters per minute and the other one is meters per second. Then you need to convert things but in this example this example is simple enough that we don't need to worry about those things there's only one velocity okay so we know that 6 must be equal to 0.16 pi h squared dh dt and so um, dh dt is equal to 6 divided by 0.16 by h squared. Okay, so go back, see we can go back to the problem and we were uh, asked to find the uh, the rate at which the water water level was rising when the level was five meters high. So here we want to find the h dt when h is equal to five. So when h is equal to five, we get six divided by one point uh, sixteen pi. And what is h equal to? Well, five. So we have five squared, which is twenty five. So this answers the first part of the problem. Um, if you want an approximation, this is 0.48 meters per minute. Uh, and okay, to to answer part B, uh, let's notice that 
this formula here, the HET, uh, it contains a constant here uh, times 1 over h squared, so 6 divided by 0.16 times pi times 1 over h squared. So that means that as h uh, increases, uh, this quantity here on the right gets smaller. So that the rate at which the uh, water, uh, water level is rising, uh, the rate at which it's uh, decreasing. Uh, and that is actually kind of na natural to think about it because uh, it takes more water to 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 fill the the next one meter say uh, because it, the, the the base is getting wider as h increases. Okay, so um, the answer we're looking for here is that as h increases. water level rises more slowly and the HDT is actually inversely proportional to h squared. Okay, and that um, is the end of, of this application.